going on everybody it's jet central coming back with another video with a topic that i've really just wanted to dive in on you know i want to go all in i want to sit here right now and really just dish out all my thoughts on the current situation and it's the new york jets potentially drafting oklahoma quarterback baker mayfield uh, with the third overall pick uh because a lot of rides okay you know a lot of rides on this third overall draft pick this is what's going to make or break mike McCagna in the front office it's going to make or break todd bowles and the whole coaching staff Okay, they need to to land this. We need to hit on this pick. This quarterback that we draft has got to be a franchise quarterback. Okay, so in the past weeks, okay, like I would say the past week or two, uh, most recently, like the last two days, a lot of momentum, a lot of steam has been building up, uh, linking Mayfield and the New York Jets. You know, I'm talking about multiple people, multiple sources from around the league, uh, with multiple reports linking them those two parties. And pretty much saying the same thing, that the New York Jets have their eye on Mayfield and he's the guy that they are targeting with the third overall pick. Now, I have read that Sam Darnold is the number one quarterback on the Jets list, but it's looking like he's not going to fall because the Browns like him at one. And if he does fall in, you know, to two, the Giants could take him. And then, of course, you know, you could, you could have a team like the Arizona Cardinals trade up to two, the Buffalo Bills trade up to two to snag him. So it's really looking like Mike McCagnan, Todd Bowles, Jeremy Bates, are looking into Mayfield, and um, you know I've liked Mayfield for a long time. I've, I've been pretty open about that with you guys. I've I liked him back in the season. I liked him the year before that. I, I remember him at Texas Tech. Now I got to be honest, I didn't think he he was going to be a first round pick. Watching his early days at Texas Tech uh, when he was the true freshman, the walk on true freshman uh, that you know put up insanely good numbers uh, for the Red Raiders. But then of course you know everyone knows his. Uh, pretty crazy story, you know, leaves Texas Tech, goes to Oklahoma, walks on there, no one even knew who he was, uh, Stoops didn't even know his name, and he goes and he walks on, and he's the starting quarterback of the Oklahoma Sooners, obviously they go on to have major success, he breaks records, puts up numbers, wins the Heisman Trophy, and now he's being talked about as a potential top 10 pick, uh, and he does have some red flags, you know, of course, Baker may, I mean, of co- every quarterback in this draft has red flags. <clears throat> Hell, every quarterback every year has red flags. But the red flags surrounding Mayfield are pretty, I don't want to say more hardcore, but just more in-depth or more concerning than, uh, you know, is the, is this guy going to be turnover prone? It, it's more off the field. Is this guy going to get in trouble at night? Is this guy going to get in trouble with the law? Do we have to worry about him going out on a Friday night in New York City? These are the type of questions that surround Baker Mayfield. Maturity problems. Um, now, do I necessarily buy into those? Me personally, no. I think it's kind of overblown. I think the draft process, you know, Senior Bowl, Combine, Pro Day, uh, the the days leading up to the draft, I I think a lot of people try to punch holes in people's games and try to look for uh, the weaknesses and and the red flags and really just try to break down the prospects as much as they can as opposed to looking at what they can do. You know, that's kind of my uh, outlook on, on, on how I personally view quarterbacks. What can they do? Let's play to their strengths, not their weaknesses. Uh, so Baker Mayfield, you know, like I just touched on uh, earlier, uh, he has the off the field problems, and then of course his height. You know, he he I actually saw him down at the uh, or up in the Senior Bowl, and he was literally my height, five eleven, uh, six foot, somewhere around there, and uh, it's concerning, you know, because you have these big offensive linemen. Are are they? Can he get it? Can he throw it past the linemen? Can he throw it above them? Can he find the windows within, you know, or the pathways in between the linemen to complete passes? You know, this isn't Oklahoma. This isn't going to be uh, shotgun every play. And and Lincoln Riley does a fantastic job of getting people uh, wide open for him down the field. The NFL is a different game, you know. So I do understand, right, I do understand the, the, the questions that people have surrounding Mayfield and his transition from the college game to the pro game. I really do understand it. But if the Jets do, in fact, pick Mayfield with the third overall selection, you know, come April 26th, I got to say, I I will be absolutely thrilled. I like Mayfield a lot. I'm buying in. Uh, He, I know, whatever, he has a lot of red flags, but I, I I mean, you take a look at his strengths. I mean, this guy's accurate. This guy is a fantastic, fantastic leader. He's mobile. Uh, He has a, he has an above average arm. National sports media, they keep saying Mayfield, he doesn't have good arm strength. That's BS. If you actually watch the tape, Mayfield has an above average arm. It's Pretty much 
because he's short and, and they just think short quarterback you can't throw you know when you think of big quarterback or big arm quarterbacks Jamarcus Russell big Josh Allen big Cam Newton big Roethlisberger you know all these all these like you know strong tall dudes that have cannon for, cannons for arms. Uh, Mayfield doesn't really fit that mold, but he does have a great arm, and he's accurate. You know, When you actually watch Lincoln Riley's system, when you put on the Baker Mayfield tape, uh, whether, whether it be this past season, you know, his Heisman winning year or the year before that, where he had much more NFL talent like Joe Mixon and Samaj Piron and uh, Didi Westbrook, both years... If you take a look at this system, it's actually more complex than Sam Darnold's system that he runs in uh, USC under uh, T. Martin and Clay Helton. This system has pro, con- pro. I mean, wide receiver pro uh, passing um, concepts, you know, pro professional concepts down the field, full field reads. Mayfield is doing some full field reads. This offense, I, it is a spread system. He is working a lot out of the gun. He doesn't really huddle too much in the Oklahoma offense, um, but. In you know post snap, uh, reading the defense, you can tell there are NFL concepts that he has to go through mentally, and he is really uh, thrived with doing that. You know he he doesn't really struggle with it. Uh, he doesn't really throw that many turnovers. You know throw interceptions. He doesn't really fumble the ball. You know I think his uh, final stat line to this past year it was forty three touchdowns to six picks. Now I'm not saying he's going to come in and throw forty three touchdowns and six picks at the next level. Of course not. Um, but it, I think it does speak to his game and his ability to uh, convert, put the ball in play, and not throw it to the other team and not be confused and whatever. I know I, I don't want to really sidetrack or really stray too far from the path uh, with this statement, you know, but I just want to touch on completion percentage. You know, everyone raves about Mayfield's 70% completion percentage. That's amazing. He's going to come into the pros. He's, he's like a pinpoint passer, all that good stuff. And uh, I do think he is accurate. Uh, but I think completion percentage, I know, whatever, a lot of people say that it's how accurate you are. I think completion percentage is more based off of decision making. Because when you actually look at it, I, I think accuracy is more based off of ball placement. You know, where's the ball hitting you? Is it way behind you? You know, are, can you lead the receivers? Can you throw with anticipation? Well, I think when you take a look at Baker Mayfield's game, not only is he completing passes, you know, completing that 70%, that stellar number, but he's also hitting the guys right in the face mask, right in the chest, right in stride. You know, he's not throwing these slant patterns and post patterns where the wide receivers literally have to stop in their tracks or slow down to try to box out corners. He leads wide receivers perfectly, tight ends especially. You know, he was uh, linking up a lot with Mark Andrews, uh, another potential draftee, uh, probably a day two guy. But anyway, Baker Mayfield, I, I really do think that that his game translates to the next level. Now, do I think he's going to come in and Drew, be Drew Brees? No. Do I think he's going to come in and be Russell Wilson from the jump and win the Super Bowl year two or year three, whatever? No, I don't. I think he's more like a Case Keenum last year. I think he's a smart quarterback that is dedicated, that is that understands the game of football, that knows how to work, uh, that's going to make everyone around him play that little bit better uh, with his leadership skills. I kind of have been going back and forth with Jets fans on this, and uh, we kind of came to the conclusion that he's almost going to be like an offensive Jamal Adams, at least vocally in the locker room and whatnot. So overall, I think when you take a step back and you look at the big picture, what does Mayfield bring to the table? I think he brings accuracy, that you've got to be accurate in, at the National Football League you know, or at this at the pro level. You've got to be accurate. Okay, I think he brings leadership. I think he brings toughness. I think he brings swag. I think he brings uh, attitude, you know, which is something that the Jets have kind of lacked, especially from the quarterback position. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I know the New York Jets kind of t- get a lot of – they, they get made fun of by, by the national sports media and whatnot. And I think Baker Mayfield kind of embraces that underdog role that I feel like the New York Jets kind of uh, are, you know, or, or portray. So I think Baker Mayfield to the New York Jets would be absolutely exciting. I would be totally on board. And uh, to be honest, to be frank with you guys, I hope it happens. I'm really hoping for Mayfield. Now, you guys know I do like Josh Rosen a lot. And if we pick Josh Rosen, I will be ecstatic. But right now, if the New York Jets decide to go Baker Mayfield, I'll be pretty pumped. Not going to lie to you. I'll be pretty pumped. And uh, one quick thing I just want to touch up on before I end the video is um, 
for the for the people out there that that question Baker Mayfield's maturity, is this guy? Can you trust him on a Friday night? Can you really hand him the keys to the franchise and say you're the franchise quarterback? You're the guy to lead this you know uh, this franchise. Are you the guy? Are you mature enough to do that? Are you going to be on Twitter going at it with other fans? Are you going to be yelling at it with fans in the stand, yelling, you know, causing problems? Is this guy mature? I will say this. If he's not mature and he comes to the New York Jets, he's going to have a great leader in quarterback Josh McCown. One of the best leaders in the NFL, whatever. I know he's not really a household name and I know he hasn't had that much success, especially in, like, you know, he hasn't, he doesn't really win the playoffs or anything like that, but based solely off of leadership, Solely off of uh, ability to teach the game, knowledge of the game, there is no better leader for Baker Mayfield than Josh McCown in the National Football League. Not Aaron Rodgers, not Tom Brady, not Big Ben, uh, you know, not Drew, maybe Drew Brees, but I think Josh McCown is the perfect, perfect, perfect mentor for Baker Mayfield. So. He would come in. He wouldn't have to necessarily play right away and be thrown to the flames and just say, you're the third pick in the draft. Get out there and you better score touchdowns and you better get us to the playoffs and, and you you have to do everything. He doesn't have to do that. You know, you he comes in, can learn the game, process it, uh, grow physically, grow mentally behind Josh McCown and potentially Teddy Bridgewater. Um, so if the New York Jets wind up with Mayfield, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but if the Jets wind up with Mayfield, I'll be ecstatic. I mean, this is what a perfect situation for any young quarterback to step into. Two great leaders, Bridgewater McCown, doesn't have to play right away. Jeremy Bates, you know, all all that good stuff. And I do think Mayfield does fit the system. I, I do think his game translates to the West Coast system. Uh, short, intermediate, rhythm passing. That's what I think Mayfield kind of thrives in. Get this guy in a rhythm uh, early on in the game. Uh, to where you can kind of stretch the field later on, uh, kind of bit work off the run game, play action, move the pocket, get him outside. So, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just pretty pumped up thinking about it. So, uh, yeah, in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts. Baker Mayfield to the Jets, do you like it or do you hate it? Um, I personally like it. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I always appreciate it, and go Jets.